Carl Jung published his famous book Psychological Types back in 1921 and his book has come to become celebrated as the most in-depth and comprehensive way to understand psychology and the personality of the individual. The goal of his books and his work was to help humans experience individuation, true self-awareness, and to help people even transcend the self gaining psychic energy and flow. Carl Jung was a person whose theories came about about a hundred years ago, yet his theories are still relevant today. But what if his theories are a lot older than what we previously think? What if his theory on the eight cognitive functions is in fact 3000 years old? Today we're speculating about Carl Jung and his connections to the famous ancient book, the I Ching. Now, the I Ching is a book that was published about 3,000 years ago, about 800 before Christ. That means the book was one of the most ancient books in human history, known to today. The I Ching explains and defines that everything, the totality of human experience, the entire universe can be broken down to two forces, yin and yang. Now, it goes further than that, it argues that when you take the and apply this principle of two principal forces and connect it with the number three, you connect and can conjure about eight specific trigrams. Now, that means everything in the world is a combination of these eight trigrams. And the number eight is a fascinating one. And we're going to go into that a bit further. But first, let's talk about the validity of the argument that the world is constituted by two forces. Is it true that the world can be really broken down to two things? Or is it a scientific fallacy? The truth is, the answer might not matter. The I Ching is utilized basing a form of Chinese alchemy. And that means it's founded on alchemical tradition. Alchemy is what could be said as a conceptual science. It is alchemy that we use in order to divine and understand and reason about things which we do not know. The truth is, when Carl Jung started working on his theories on the human mind and on human experience, he had no access to the modern instruments that we do today. He didn't know about neuroscience or the inner workings of the mind or neurotransmitters. He didn't know about genetics and how that might influence personality. He was forced to navigate something which he could not break. He was forced to understand the subjective innermost experience of humanity without any tools. So how did he do it? Well, the truth is he used alchemy. Alchemy is and argues that if you break down things into two parts and then from there form a triangle and then from there apply these principle of two forces to these three things, you can create eight distinct forces. And then from there on you can create and describe 64 different forces. Then from there on you can understand and map out and begin to map and connect different forms of experiences. So what he did was he took this principle of two divine forces, subjectivity and objectivity, and he applied it to the human mind, stating that extorted thinking was more objective and stating that inverted feeling encapsulated everything that was more subjective. Yeah, Carl Jung started by reasoning about feeling and thinking as the two primary forces. And later he started thinking about introversion and extroversion and intuition and sensing. The I Ching similarly starts with what is most yang and then what is most yin. And then applied and broke this, these two forces down to multiple parts to try to explain and go beyond these two forces to explain the totality of human experience. And ultimately, this gives us a language. Instead of first trying to find things and then mapping them to concepts, what alchemy does is it first creates concepts for things and then tries to apply and find things to put inside these concepts. Alchemy gives us a way to kind of delineate and kind of divide the mind so that we can start to form an idea about things allowing us to reason about things which we have no clue about. Now the question of this video is, to which degree was Carl Jung inspired and influenced by the I Ching? The truth is, we don't really know. We know that Carl Jung wrote the foreword to I Ching, and we know that he was deeply fascinated with this model, but we don't know when he discovered it and how long he has been working with it. 
The truth is, the I Ching applies and arrives at similar explanations to the theories of Carl Jung. And that's startling. How can a theory from 3,000 years ago and a theory that came about 100 years ago be so similar? What are the connections here? And how did they arrive at a similar framework using such different experiences? Are the eight trigrams in fact connected to the eight cognitive functions? And if so, how? It's very much possible that the eight trigrams can be divided in this way. First, with heaven, kyan, as extroverted thinking, and then as kun, earth, as introverted feeling. Then, from there on, we can go to thunder, chen, and map that out as extroverted intuition, then khan, water, as introverted intuition. Jen, or mountain, as introverted thinking, Sun or wind as introverted sensing, Li or flame as extroverted sensing, and finally lake or Dui as extroverted feeling. How did I arrive at these connections? Well, first of all, heaven is the most yang in its nature. That means it's the most based on objectivity of all forces. It's a rational force of judgment from the heavens. It's associated with an emperor or a ruler or with might and with power. Just as Kun or Earth is associated with feeling, with the most subjective innermost human experience, healing or connection to the feeling world. Shen or thunder means to strike with opportunity, to strike fast, to bring about change from out of nowhere. Khan or water means to seek out depth, Represented by the pilgrim on its wandering journey, water is searching for the deepest spaces of the world. Mountain, or introverted thinking, is associated with going up to your own place of judgment and isolating yourself from other people to formulate your own logic or opinion. Wind, or xun, or introverted sensing, is associated with the slow and persistent force that brings about slow change in the world. Li or flame or extroverted sensing is associated with brightness, intensity and action. And Dui or lake is associated with connection between people, communication and understanding between tribes and one another. Yeah, the question of today's video is, to which degree was Carl Jung influenced by these eight trigrams and did it influence his research and his arrival at the conclusion of eight cognitive processes. And to which degree do these functions or trigrams map out and accurately explain the scope and structure of the world? Feel free to leave your comments and your thoughts in the comments down below and I hope to see you all in the next video.